Hello there and welcome to this tutorial on um, creating a Cornell box. So the Cornell box is well known in computer graphics history for being a demonstration of the transfer of light between objects and global illumination, color bleeding, all kinds of other stuff can be shown with the Cornell box. I'm going to actually make it from start to finish here in the next couple of minutes and demonstrate the way in which we can actually get it working with um, some global illumination in Random and from Maya version 5.0, RMS 4.0. So let's make a box. Creating a box. Any box will do for the moment. I'll just work with the um, settings we've got here afterwards in the polycube shape. I'm going to set all these to 10. Okay, and let's just center it up in our scene. So I'm going to change 0 dot 0 and 0. Okay, and make sure that it's actually sitting on the floor on the ground plane. Okay, um, I'm going to invert the, um, the normals. So first of all, I'm going to just make sure that I've got my polygon display set to back face culling. I'm going to reverse the normals. Reverse the normals so I can see inside the box. And I'm going to select one of the faces here to get rid of. Let's select a face. Whoops. Face mode, that would help. Let's go there and delete that. So a way of looking into the box with nothing in the way. Okay, so most of them we can see through. They're all facing inwards just so we know that our normals are facing the correct direction. Okay, this is the box we'll be working with. I'll zoom in a little bit closer here so we can actually see what's going on. Um, right click and assign material. Assign new material and I'm going to use matte materials for this whole um, exercise. So RMS matte and let's have a look. Set to white, that's fine at the moment. Um, I'm now going to go to faces. I'm going to apply again the matte material. Let's use just random and here. Here's another matte material. I'm going to make this um, blue, and I'm going to make this a matte material, and I'm going to make it red. Okay. Let's just make sure these are showing up. So it's blue, and there's red. So there's the standard Cornell box as things stand. Okay. Lining myself up. And um, the next thing I want to do is to actually make a random man area light. So let's just click on the create area light and we'll see it actually produces one in the middle of the scene there. Um, let's move it up. So we're going to move it up. And we want to make sure it's facing downwards. So I'm going to rotate it. Let's rotate it around this way. Go to my channel box layers here. Let's go to the layers. I just want to be at the base level of it. Yeah, 90 degrees. Minus 90. Always getting these confused. So it's pointing downwards, and I want to move it up 9.9 .9 in total. So it's just down below the bottom, or say the top of the box. 9.9 .9 units. Not really worrying too much about what size things are at the moment. Okay, so here we have the box set up. I'll put some stuff in it in a couple of minutes, but let's just start by doing an initial render. So let's bring my it into view. This is next as I tried it earlier, and let's re-render it. Let's see what we look like. It's all looking rather dark. So with this light, I'm going to actually have to make it slightly larger. I'm going to scale it up. Um, scale. Scale it up to size 4. Render again. Re-render. Beginning to get some light on it. And I'm going to actually change the um, intensity. Remembering intensity is a logarithmic scale in uh, RenderMan for Maya. So it's not just three times as large, it's actually 10 times and 10 times. So that's 100 times more intensity. 
the number 3 represents 100 times more than the number 1. And we're beginning to get some light. Okay, now we're not seeing any light at all in the ceiling here. The reason for that is the Renderman light has not actually been set up to be double-sided, um, and we're not getting any bounce light yet. Bounce light isn't just happening for us. Okay, so the reason we're going to actually check some stuff here, let's have a look. Well, in our features, we already have ray tracing set to one. We're still not seeing any um, global illumination, any bounce. Why is that? The reason is, in order to get global illumination, this little thing here that looks rather like my scene here, is create random and global illumination. Basically, it's a little uh, dummy which goes into a scene and actually turns on global illumination. I can put it anywhere. It won't actually have an effect as to the way in which things work. But it does have an awful lot of effect um, in terms of turning the global illumination on and off. So let's just try re-rendering now. And we'll see a substantial difference from what we have here. Let's re-render. And that's beginning to look a bit more like a Cornell box. So the next thing I want to do is try and cut down on the amount of noise here. So for the samples, I'm going to increase that to 128. Go back into it and re-render. It's cutting down on it slightly. And go into the light. Let's put some more samples coming out of this. Ray hit samples. Let's change it to 64. And re-render. Let's have a look and see what this is looking like. Hasn't made a massive difference. Let's change this to 128. This is the camera samples. Again, these samples are not having a massive impact. The one thing that does have an impact is the samples which we have coming from our global illumination. So let's change this to uh, 256, 512. Re render. Starting to get a nice smooth global illumination result here. Um, it's an awful lot of work to actually get that much here. Now, we're still not getting a lot of color bleeding. One of the reasons is my number of bounces I have set here is only set to one bounce. If I change this to, say, six bounces, I'm going to drop this down here, so I did two, five, six. Don't actually need it quite set so high. And re-render. You can see we're getting a bit more color bleed. A bit of a nicer result. Still not perfect what we want, but we're getting somewhere. And what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to put in a, a sphere. Let's put a sphere in here. Come on, draw the sphere. Draw. Where am I? Where is the sphere coming? Okay, let's draw the sphere. And there we go. Apologies for that. Some reason Maya was just um, messing with me. Okay, now let's move this in and move it up. Okay, and assign a material to it. Let's assign a standard renderman material in white and um, bring down the specular slightly. So specular gains at one at the moment. I'm going to bring it down to about 0.5. Increase the roughness a little bit just so it's not that shiny. Let's try re-rendering this. So we can see quite clearly it's picking up the red, not just as a reflection. Um, and also red is coming into the, um, the shadows around here. Okay, I'll just put in a glass material here now as well. So let's select this, Control D, OK. 
copying it. Let's move it over here. Whoops, not down there. Let's move it over here. Um, right click. Okay, got it. Um, assign a glass material to it. Okay, and try one last render. Now there are some ways in which I can actually tweak these materials to make them better, which I will go through at some later point. Let's just do a re-render. So there we have a um, Cornell box with something strange happening here with the sphere. Not exactly sure why. Let me just have a look at this. Right click, object mode, yes. I'm going to try attaching a um, subdivision, subdiv scheme to that just to see if it makes a difference. And I'm going to try rendering it. Don't know why we were getting that strange result previously. Let's see what's going on. Yeah, that's a bit nicer. Um, it's because we actually had some edges to those polygons there that were actually getting a little bit unfortunate. So, the Cornell box. Classic in computer graphics. And I'm going to stop things here for the moment. And thank you very much for listening and watching.